Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're happy once again, amen, to be able, amen, to come to you by the means of YouTube, amen, talking about Jesus, talking about the Savior of the world, amen. We're thankful to the Lord for another day and time to talk about the Lord, amen. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus plus nothing. I believe in Jesus plus nothing. No, ad no, added, no additives is needed. Amen. No subtractions is needed. I believe in Jesus plus nothing. Now, we want to talk, and as you see, our topic today is Jesus or holiness. Amen. Jesus or holiness. But let me say this right here. Uh, I'm not just speaking exclusively about holiness. We're going to deal with holiness because that's the church I come out of. Amen. That's the church that I have the greatest experience in, and that's the church that I am familiar with. Amen. But it is not exclusive to holiness. Amen. Catholicism. Amen. Pentecostalism. Amen. Baptist. Amen. Uh, uh, Lutheran. Amen. Uh, Presbyterian. Amen. Uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. Uh, and, you, and the list just goes on and on. Islam, amen. Uh, uh, what, Hinduism, amen. Uh, Confucianism, amen. Just, you, the list just goes on and on. Uh, Jesus or this particular religion. Jesus or this particular doctrine. Jesus or this particular belief. Which one is right? Which one is right? And we're going to take the word of God, amen. And look into the word of God and let the word of God tell us, amen, which one, amen. My mind immediately go to the book of Mark, the uh, ninth chapter, I believe in verse 7, where Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses is there, amen. Elijah is there. Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. The disciples represent the church. Jesus represents himself. And God speaks from heaven and says, this is my beloved son. Hear him. God has already spoken. Amen. Who we are to hear. Amen. So who and what are we to be listening to today as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord? Uh, we are to listen to Jesus. We're to listen to Christ. Amen. And obey him. All right. Let's go to our scripture today. Let's go to our scripture, the book of Matthew 16 and verse 13. Matthew 16 and verse 13. Amen. Uh, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, so one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man at that time that he was Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ. Now, this, amen, is the first question uh, uh, that we need to look at today. Amen. This is the first question. Uh, 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 whom do men say that I, 
the son of man am. Amen. And the question uh, to be asked is this, what Jesus said, who do you say I am? He asked them, who do men say that I am? As he traveled the world, amen, and as he traveled in his, in, in his uh, district, if you will, amen, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing the sick, uh, his fame spread abroad and and many, amen, were asking, who is this? And so he asked his disciples, who do you say I am? And then he asked them, who, who do men say, rather, that I am? Then he asked his disciples, well, he asked his disciples, who do men say this? Some say you Jeremiah. Some say you John the Baptist. John had been killed at this particular time. Uh, uh, so you are reincarnated John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Some say you may be one of the other prophets. But he asked the central question, and this is the central question of this whole lesson. Who do you say I am? Who is Jesus? Who is he? And who is he, more importantly, to you? Who is he to you? Uh, uh, is Jesus holiness? Was Jesus of the holiness doctrine? Is Jesus holiness? Is Jesus a Baptist? Is Jesus Pentecostal? Is Jesus Catholic? Is Jesus non-denominational? Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is simply Jesus. He's the son of the living God. No, no title is needed. I am the son of the living God. Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon, boy, Jonah, for flesh had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, the Son of God, I say unto you that upon this rock, upon this truth, upon this solid declaration and foundation, I will build my church, not churches, my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Christ, and the belief that Christ is the Son of the living God, not Jesus only, God, Jesus the Father, Jesus the Son, Jesus the Holy Ghost, no. Not, not just a prophet. The church of Christ is built on the faith that Jesus is the son of the living God. This is the foundation of the church. Now, men have made holiness an idol. Amen. No longer do they serve or preach Christ. They preach holiness. And as I said, not just holiness, uh, these other religions, these other titles and names. But let's deal with this one, and as we deal with it, you put whatever name you want to put there because the bottom line is that Jesus is the foundation of the church and him being the son of the living God. As I said, uh, somebody may have tensed up on me when I said they made holiness an idol God. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. In the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, starting at verse 16. Let's read this. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue of the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stockics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? 
For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, and we would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear of some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by, I beheld your devotions, and I found an, an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him, there, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell in all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us through the fall of Adam. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that God, listen to this, that, that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven art and man's devices. Are you listening to me? Let me say, read that again. Verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that God that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven art or and man's device. These religions that we have, holiness, Pentecostalism, Baptist, uh, Catholicism, uh, and, uh, and on down the line, these are the devices of man. You will never read of holiness in scripture, you'll never read of holiness. I'm talking about the doctrine of holiness, the, re the belief, the religion of holiness. You'll never read that in scripture. It talks about holiness, but it does not talk. You'll never read a scripture that says anything about holiness, the doctrine of holiness. The only doctrine in the New Testament that is ordained is the doctrine of Christ. Verse 429 again. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And in times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because that, because he hath appointed a day. Now listen to what Paul is going to preach. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. See, he goes back to Christ. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. Now who is he talking about? And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men claim unto him, and believed, among which were Dionysius the Aragite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Now, if you notice, Paul said, and we read that over more than once, verse 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. God is not about the buildings. 
Christ is not about the buildings. He's not about man's devices. This is Mount so-and-so. This is full gospel so-and-so. This is the church of God in Christ. This is the Lutheran. This is, this is uh, Islam. This is, this is Catholicism. This is Christianity. This is Pentecostalism. Christ is not about all that. All those things have been created. They are the devices of man, and they become idols of worship. And if you don't believe me, just look at the church today. We're preaching more about holiness than we're talking about Jesus. We're telling people that holiness is right. Not Jesus is right, but holiness is right. Or we're talking about Baptists. Or we're talking about the Kojic. Or we're talking about Islam. Or we're talking about uh, Christianity. Or we're talking about Baptists. Or we're talking about this and that. We have made it about everything but Jesus Christ. And he said, I am Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. No title is needed. Flesh and blood are not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, uh, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he is not holiness. He is not Baptist. He is not non-denominational. He is not Catholicism. He is not Christianity. Any title that you want to go by, the only title biblically given by Christ and scripturally given from God is thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee. But my Father, which is in heaven and on the Mount of Transfiguration, God himself spoke and said, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Now let's move on. Who then or what is the foundation of the church? Upon this rock I build my church. He didn't say churches. Upon this rock I build my church. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe in who? In Christ. What is the foundation of the church? Let's let the word of God tell us. Let's go to it. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 3. Well, let's, look, let's start at verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 3, this is just going to be part 1. We're not going to finish today. Paul called, and I want you to notice Paul's emphasis on what he put places the emphasis on. Peter said, thou art the Christ. Paul is a minister of Jesus Christ. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he focuses on Christ. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Through the will of God and Sothenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, call to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at it, look at this. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Notice, notice, notice. He keeps, he, he's establishing this church of Corinth in Christ. Not in holiness, not in baptism, not in Pentecostalism. Verse, verse 5. That in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind and no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, God is faithful by whom you will call unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Verse 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul or any other man? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other, for Christ sent me not to preach, not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Now listen to that. Because we've made the cross of Christ of none effect. We've just come through Easter or Resurrection Day. And people have talked about the cross of Christ, but you may not hear no more about the cross of Christ. Or they may only sprinkle it in from now to next Easter. Because we have made the gospel, we have made, Christ, we have made salvation about holiness, baptism. Pentecostal, Kojic, everything but Christ. We made the cross of Christ of none fit by our idols. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? But after that in wisdom, but after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greek foolishness. But unto, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and wisdom of God. So we preach Christ. That's it. When he gave the Great Commission, Matthew 24, Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Mark 16 and 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What is the gospel? The gospel, Romans 1 and 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel, not of God. I am not as called the laws of God. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. God said, hear him. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believes. Everyone. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. To the barbarian and to the Scythian. To the wise, to the unwise. We preach Christ. So what is the foundation of the church? The foundation of the church is Christ. Are you listening to me? All right, let's move on. That was, that was uh, 1 Corinthians 1, starting at verse 1. I may have said 3, but that was 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through verse 23. All right, now let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 3. And verse 10, as we said, I think I made a mistake that, that our first reading, that was 1 Corinthians 1. I want, you to, I want you to read the word of God with us. 
1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 23. Now, that, now we're going to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10. Paul said, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Paul laid the foundation for the church of Corinth. And as you've seen in our earlier reading, he established the church in Jesus. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. You can't lay another foundation for the church. There is not another foundation. This is not heaven where we've got 12 foundations. This is earth. He's talking about the church. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation for the church. Foundation for Christ's church cannot be holiness, cannot be Catholicism, cannot be Baptist, cannot be Pentecostal. The foundation of the church is Christ. And then he said, let every man take heed how he build it their own. Every man take heed. There's only one body. Are you listening to me? There's only one body. And that body is the body of Christ. Are you listening to me? Is Christ divided? No. Well, how did we get all these different religions? How did we get all these different titles? Holiness, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran. Uh, uh, Pentecostalism, Jesus on the seven day Adventist. Where did all of this stuff come from? If the foundation of the church is Christ, this is the devices of men that they have made, just like the idol gods in biblical days, they have made these things their idols. And they have turned from Christ. How many churches did Jesus build? He said, upon this rock, I build my church. Singular. I build my church. Let's go to the word of God. Let's go to the word of God. This is Ephesians. Chapter 4. Verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, and this is Apostle Paul again, Beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same that also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Who is he talking about here? He's talking about Christ. Verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Listen to verse 13. Till we all come in, in the unity of the faith. Till we all come into the unity of the doctrine of Christ. One faith, the doctrine of Christ, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, that we henceforth 
be no more children <clears throat> tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Christ. Till we, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro. This is what we see. This is why you got Baptist, Holiness, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Catholicism. Because we're children. But that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. You know, stop talking about Christ. Now we only talk about holiness. Stop talking about the commandments of Christ and preaching about the things of Christ. Now it's all about holiness, 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 holiness. Baptist, Baptist, Baptist. The slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. See, when you take Christ, let me say this. When you take Christ out of the church, it's no longer Christ's church. When you establish another foundation, it's no longer Christ's church. Because he said, other foundation can no man lay. No man lay. Then that is laid. Jesus said, upon this rock, me being the son of God, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. One body. Are you listening to me? One body. One baptism. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God and Father who is above all and through all and in you all. So where does all these other churches come from? Where does all these other branches come from? They come from men, not from Christ. Now this is just part one. We'll get into the other later on. Take the scriptures and read them. We've given them that you may know the truth. And we're speaking the truth in love. I believe in Jesus plus nothing. God bless you.